Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Oblong Polka Dots and my name is Kerr. And on this channel, we talk about makeup, skincare, and beauty. So if that's something you're into, you've come to the right place. Today, I am just bumming around. It's a Saturday, I don't really have to do anything, but I am going to lunch with my cousin. So because she is always so beautiful and dressed to the nines and is a complete head turner, I want to match that energy and try and put on a nice face. So let's try that. I'm going to start off the way I always do and prime my face. Right now I've been using the Fenty Pro Filter Primer. I've said this in many other videos, but I'm mentioning it in probably all of them whenever I use it. Um, when I first bought this primer, I didn't much care for it, but I really like it now. So, start with that. I popped two pumps in there because I realized that one pump doesn't really do what it needs to do for me so I use two pumps and I always make sure to get my t-zone especially like right here because I get really oily okay that's good and then next I'm gonna prime my eyes the primer I'm absolutely in love with right now is the essence prime like a boss eyeshadow base this stuff is so 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 good you guys if you don't have it, you need to buy it. It's like less than, what, three bucks, I think. And just a little bit goes a long ways. Hold on. I keep trying to put this on my eyes, but I realize it's easier just to put on the back of my hand and then put on my eyes. Just know that when you do, like I use a very small amount. When you go to use it, though, don't freak out because it does feel oily at first, but it dries down nicely. There we go. And then the same thing for the other eye. All right, that's better. And then let me grab my mirror. I don't know why I've made my setup look like this. It looks weird. Like I normally have my stuff laid out on my table a different way, but it's fine. Also, does it look crooked to you? Does it look, does this look crooked? Pretty good. Is it balanced? Do I look like I'm straight up and down? I hope so. I apologize if the first part of the video was crooked. Um. Okay, we're gonna scoot the mirror over I'm going to scoot this over. There we go. Now I can see. And again, I don't know. I feel like it's crooked. Maybe not. Maybe I'm tripping. Am I tripping? Probably. <laughs> All right. Whatever. So yeah, see, it's already like, I can feel it's already tacky. That's good. All right. Quit fiddling around. <laughs> So the palette that I want to use today is the, I'm actually going to use two palettes today. One is the Ace Beauté Classical Paradise palette. This is an oldie. And then the Jungle Lights palette from, what is this brand again? Oh, uh, I think it's Flower Beauty, right? Yeah, Flower Beauty. Um, But yeah, it's going to be a green look. And I don't know why I'm so awkward, you guys. I'm sorry. Let me grab a brush. All my stuff is leaning like this way, so if you see it moving, that's what's going on. This is just a regular wide flat brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and open this palette. It does come with a mirror. It's got a little piece of plastic on top. I don't think I've used this palette, but like once. And if you do decide to buy this palette, you guys, it is so, so, so pigmented. So you've been warned, but this is what it looks like. It's really beautiful. And then even though on camera it's not picking up very well, I'm going to use these two colors and they're both green. And then I'll follow up with the other sparkly green and we'll see how it works out. I might have to throw like a little bit of brown or something in here, but we'll just start off with this first one. So this one here on top is the one I'm going to start with for the majority of my lid and it's called Golden Apple. So let's see. This is what it looks like on the brush. I'm just going to start patting it on my eye. It's a very um, olive toned shade. So it's really rather muted or neutral, which I like. So there we go. See that? Very neutral not a super heavy mega bombastic 
color. It's just hanging out, doing its thing, minding its business, drinking water, all that fun stuff. And I'm not doing anything but patting it in because I'm just packing the color on. I do that often with my shadows, more often than not, because I really want to have a lot of color payoff. Do a little bit more on this side. Sometimes the best looks are simple looks, and I'm not going all the way to the outside of my eye either, in case you guys are wondering. I'm stopping just short, if you can see that. And I learned that from Wayne Goss. Okay, that looks good. Just a nice neutral green. Now, since this is not as, I don't know, maybe not as dramatic as I was hoping for, I think I'm gonna pull in a corner, it's a corner, an outside corner color. And I think the one I'm gonna work with is called Earth. And this is Earth right here. If you hear any noise in the background, that's my husband trying to quietly open a closet. Hi. <laughs> Thanks. So I'm just going into the corner, you can see, and just darkening it up a little bit because I like to have that kind of smoky effect. And I'm going to do the same thing on this eye. There we go. A little bit more. Again, these colors are so saturated that I'm really trying to be careful not to go overboard because generally with Ace Beauté, a little bit goes a very, very long ways. And it can be really difficult to try and correct for um, using too much color after the fact, <laughs> which has totally happened to me before. So just trying to be careful with it. All right, so that, that looks good to me. I think that's more of what I was looking for. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scooch this over. I'm going to take the same brush, I believe. Yeah, that shouldn't hurt anything. Flip it back over to that um, golden apple side. And now that other color that was there on the bottom, that mineral, that's what I want to use next, this one. And I know it's not picking up on camera, but it is green. <laughs> and I just want to see how it looks. Actually, yeah, let's just see how it looks. I was going to add some glitter glue to really make it pop, but I think that's what I'm going to use the jungle lights for. So let's just see what it looks like. Here it is. I picked it up on the brush. It is so, so sparkly. It's really pretty. I'm going to put that on my lid. Yeah, so even though it is quite sparkly, it's not an overwhelming sort of bright, shiny, sparkly color. Can you see that? All right. And really, it's looking more pewter than green, which is fine. I'm not mad at that. We'll work with it. And I'm just blending out those lines between the two shades because I don't want to have like a, a harsh line in between. Okay. What do you think so far? Yes, no? Let me know in the comments. Um, I love this palette. I think it is absolutely beautiful. I think the reason I don't reach for it maybe as frequently as I would is because it's just so incredibly pigmented. It's almost like you can't really, you have to just pick like one shade in the palette and then go with it because they're, they're just really, it's beautiful. It's very, very dominating though. All right, so let's grab this Jungle Lights palette. I think this is where my glitter glue is going to come in. I haven't used this yet, um, but I, quite frankly, I got sick of hearing about it <laughs> because everybody rants and raves about this thing. And I'm not really one to buy a palette that has like all shimmers in it. I just don't think that I would get much use out of it. But because it was on sale and because I felt like I would probably use it, you know, a couple few times that it would be worth it. So that's why I grabbed it. I'm going to use the NYX Glitter Primer. I love this stuff. I think it works really, really well. 
And again, just like with the other primer, a little bit goes a long ways. I'm just going to put some on the back of my hand because lately I've been going like a bit overboard with it. I'm going to grab a totally different brush now, just one of my synthetic brushes from Wet n Wild. I'm going to use that to dab this on my lid. And again, I only put a little tiny bit on there and you can see there's some on my brush, but you'll see what I mean in a second. It can just be a bit much. I do see some fallout on my face from the Ace Beauté. So that's something else you might want to look out for. I know a lot of people like to do their face first and then they finish with their eyes. But for um, the Ace Beauté shadows, I suggest that you do your eyes first. I really, really do. Because you might come into a situation where you end up having to take off all your base because of the fallout but again those colors are so beautiful and saturated it's up to you um let's grab another clean brush just another one of these not the one i just used for the um glitter primer but just a plain one plain <laughs> just one that doesn't have anything on it oh my gosh honestly all right so we're gonna go for it we're just gonna dive right into that green right there these are not labeled i don't think Oh, they are labeled. So the green one right here is called Anaconda. The label's on the back. So we're just going to go for Anaconda and see how it works with the brush. Um, picking it up with the brush so far, I can tell you up front that I already have some fallout. Um, it doesn't have that kind of like overspray, but it definitely has something. It's very creamy. Wow, look at that. Holy moly. Oh my gosh, you guys. This is beautiful. Okay. I get it. I get the hype. I get it. I'm a believer. Wow. Are you seeing this? Is this picking up on camera? I sure hope so. Wow. This is beautiful. Let's see how it spreads. Look at that. That is so dramatic. All of this to go out and eat sushi. <laughs> oh, it's gorgeous. I love this color. Okay, I get it now. I totally get it. Now I understand the hype. It's true. Look at this. That's like one swipe, you guys. I'm just patting it in. One swipe. I see minimal fallout. That could be, though, because of the glitter glue that I just used. So... You know, maybe I'll try this next time without using the glue to see how it lasts. But, wow. Wow. Are you seeing this? Look at this. Wow. Okay. Well, since we're here, let's see if I can grab a smaller brush and just do the inner corner. Let's grab one of these little fluffy round ones. I'm going to try this color right here on the bottom. I think it's being washed out. Here we go. This one. And this one is called Paradise. And I'm going to use that for my inner corner. And let's just check it out. It's the same kind of um, feel, the same kind of texture. I think all of them have the same texture, even though it's a different color. Let's see. Wow. It's so pretty. It's like this beautiful, bright, golden, oh my gosh, it's just spectacular. Holy crap. I only have one regret here, you guys. I regret not having purchased this palette sooner. This is going to be like my go-to for dramatic inner corner highlight, like super metallic I don't know. I'm at a loss for words. You get the point. Wow. Look at that. Wow. Okay. Well, there you have it. Sometimes, you know, sometimes I'm wrong about things and that's okay. Um, you know, I was totally wrong about this Jungle Lights palette. Walk or run, do not walk, buy it it's worth it. It's worth it at full price. It definitely was worth it on sale. 
So that's what that looks like. And I guess we're just going to have to finish up the eyes. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this Urban Decay Glide On Pencil. This is in the color Stash. It's green. We're sticking with that green theme. And we're just going to go ahead and line the eyes. Just going as close to the lash line as possible. Right under, underneath. I'm going to just like tight line it. Same thing for the other side. Roll in the eyes and the back of my head so I don't poke my eye out. There we go. I don't typically line my bottom lash line, so we're going to leave that alone. But I do have this khaki color from CoverGirl, and it's the True Naked Clean Chip. Let me see what this looks like. I don't know if I want to add this or if I'm just doing too much. I might be doing the most here, you guys. Maybe that's too much. Is there another one in here? What's this one? That wasn't the khaki. This is the khaki. This is from um, Laura Mercier. It's one of the, I think they're called caviar sticks. Why not? Let's just do it. Let's just do it. Like I said, I don't normally line my bottom line, but if we're going to be dramatic, might as well be dramatic. All right. What do you think? Too much? Not enough? just right. Let me know in the comments. Let me know if I went overboard. <laughs> we'll fix it here in a minute with some mascara either way. Um, okay, let's leave that for now. And then I do, like I had mentioned, I have some fallout underneath my eyes. So we're going to go ahead and just try and wipe that away a little bit. Okay, that's better. Let's throw some face on. So I have a couple different foundations that are sitting in my compass case right now, which you guys, I have not done a compass case video in so long. I probably need to. And yeah, so just remind me real quick though. I think I probably need to blend out these edges just a little bit. Hold on. I know it's dramatic, but let's not have a, a harsh edge. Soften it up a little bit. And again, these Ace Beauté shadows, you guys, they are no joke. I have not added anything to this brush. I'm just sweeping it back and forth, and it's already, like, leaving a strong line. So they are just some of the most highly pigmented shadows I've ever used. And you do need to be careful because some of them, I don't believe, are um, supposed to be used on the eyes. So... Check your palette before you begin to use it and make sure you know like what the ingredients are and what's safe for use around the eye. Okay, let's soften it up a bit. That's a little bit better. Um, okay, so yeah, like I said, I have a couple foundations that are in front of me today. I have the NYX Can't Stop, Won't Stop. This is such a great foundation. It's a full coverage foundation and I genuinely believe that. This is in the shade Warm Honey. I have not used this yet. It's the Makeup Forever HD Skin. I used to buy the other one 100 years ago. It was my favorite foundation. So I think I might try this one today. Um, yeah, it's my first time using it. So let's see how it goes. Maybe start with one pump. Ooh, this looks a little bit light. Maybe two pumps. We'll see. That's two pumps, but I don't know if I'm going to use both. This looks a little bit light for me, so I'm hoping that it oxidizes, kind of like the CoverGirl True Naked Foundation, but let's just try it out. I had to match it online. I couldn't match it in person, so I did the little, what do you call it? A little survey thing, the quiz, to try and figure out like what was the right shade for me. Feels good though. It feels just like the other, it smells like the other formula too. Okay, this is nice. Let's get under here. What do you think? Is that a good match? I'm sitting in front of a window and from here it does look like a good match.
Yeah, I think that's a good match. I think it looks nice. Good job. Foundation binder, or whatever you're called. The little quiz thing. Yeah, this feels exactly like the old version. This is nice. It's very lightweight. It does. It feels very skin-like. So if you have a problem when putting on foundation where you don't like the way it feels, this might be a really good option for you. I'm just using a sponge right now to finish blending this out, and I don't use my sponges wet. I used to, but I discovered that using them dry is actually just better for me. I feel like my foundation or tinted moisturizer, or whatever I'm using, performs better when I use a dry brush. So there we go. Let's get around some of that melasma. I don't know if you guys have melasma, but I do. Yeah, this is a nice shade. It's a very good match. You just never know when you're trying to figure it out online. It's kind of like the Wild West out there. All right, so now I'm going to start with my Earth Star. I'm going to put on some concealer. This is my absolute favorite concealer, you guys. It's the Lancome Taint Idol Ultra Wear. The shade that I use right now is 470. Um, my summer shade is... 460. I know it sounds like it should be the other way around, but 470 is my winter shade. 460 is my um, summer shade. So I'll do this. And I think it's, they're both in the warm range in case we're a foundation or concealer twins. Twinsies. Did I tell you what color I used for the Makeup Forever foundation? I don't think I did. Hold on. I'll grab it for you and tell you what I have. So for the Makeup Forever Foundation, I have the color 3N54. 3N54. So if we are um, twins in terms of... Uh, I can't speak. In terms of foundation, if we're twins, that's what that is. Okay. And then we're just going to pat this in. Hopefully this plays well together. So far, the Lancome concealer has played well with most of my foundations, but you just never know. Same thing, it plays well with my tinted moisturizer, which is great because I'm going to need it too. If I'm going to get through all these foundations, because I really don't want to change or have to look for another concealer that is a go-to. Yeah, that looks nice. Oh my gosh. That blends very nicely. You see that? I like it. Okay, let's powder it down. So let's move some of these first of all. This is it. Getting in the way. Um, my favorite powder right now is one that I believe is discontinued, and it's the Becca Hydra Mist Set and Refresh Powder. I am down to the last little nubbin, so if you can see that. I'm so sad. I'm going to have to find another ride or die for powders, but for now, I still have a little bit left in there, so that's what I'm going to use. I sometimes go overboard with this powder, you guys. I'll be the first to admit, but it's so good. The reason I like it is because it doesn't dry my skin out. It doesn't make me feel like... You know that feeling when you put powder on your face and your face just feels tight and dry? This powder doesn't do that for me. It feels really nice. There we go. That should hold me for the afternoon. Okay, and then let's see. We are going to let's put this away. Let me grab a blush. I've been using the same blushes, and well, specifically the same blush. Oh my gosh. I just got powder everywhere. <laughs> it's fine. Um, I've been using the same blush, like I was going to say, probably every day for the past couple of weeks. So I finally switched it out of my compass case. I was like, this is ridiculous. I got to start using some of my other blushes. But that blush had me in a chokehold, and it's by NARS, and it's called Savage. 
So I do still have another Nas blush in here, but I'm not using this today. Instead, I'm going to go with this uh, Morena Beauté. And the shade that I have here is called Sweet Brown. And it's number two. And I have not used this blush yet. Um, it comes in a really nice container. It's got the little piece of plastic. It's got a mirror. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? It's a nice, pretty, peachy, sort of brown, neutral blush, which is perfect for the brown girl. You know we love it. So let's give it a try. I have no idea how pigmented this is, but I can tell you that I only dipped my brush in, and that's how much just got on there. So this is either going to be a disaster or it's going to turn out well. What do you think? Ooh, this is beautiful. It's buildable. So even though there was a lot of pigment on the brush, it's not saturated. It's not like highly pigmented. I think that one dip is actually perfect. Although you know me, I'll go overboard with some blush in a heartbeat. I love blush. I think it's so fun. It just adds a whole nother dimension to your look. Maybe one more dip. Yeah, let's get in there. Look at that. It's like a nice, warm, peachy. This is gorgeous. I like this color. This is very, very nice. If you are my complexion, yeah, you might want to give this a try. This is beautiful. Look at that. You like it? I feel like it has a very ethereal glow. I feel like a princess. Like a princess. Okay, I'm putting this back. You guys, if you've been on my channel for a long time, you know I have a problem where I just keep putting everything back in the box and I have to make a concerted effort not to do it. It's like it doesn't need to go back in the box anymore. I'm going to use it. So please be proud of me. I took it out of the box. I'll put the box in the recycling. All right, so for my brows, I'm just going to tidy up a little bit. My brows are tattooed, but every once in a while, I do like to fill them in. So today is one of those every once in a while kind of days. This is the um, brow pencil from MAC. I always buy this shade um, Spiked or Spike. What is this? Spike or Spiked? Spiked, like past tense. Okay. Let's put that there. Y'all, I was slipping the other day. I made a video and I was looking at my brows and I was like, what? I needed to pluck them and I can see that I probably need to do it again. But yeah. We even talked about it in the video. I was like, y'all can't have me out here in these streets looking like that. <laughs> ah, looking like nobody cares about me. Okay, that looks good. I think I probably put too much powder under my eyes because I have some creasing going on, but it's fine. Not the end of the world. I don't think anybody's going to walk up to me in public and say, you know, excuse me. I think you put too much powder under your eyes. You have some creasing. Can you imagine the gall? All right, so let's set all of this, shall we? I'm going to use the Cryolin Ultra Setting Spray. Love this stuff. It is highly, highly, like it's got a ton of alcohol. So if you're sensitive to that, this may not be for you. Hmm. But because it has so much alcohol, it has a very low surface density, so it does dry quickly. I do recommend, though, every once in a while when you're using this to go ahead and remove the sprayer and just soak it in water because it will get clogged over time. Just letting you know. I think I say that probably in every video, but I'm sure some people have used it and thought it stopped working. And it's really just a sprayer that needed to be just soaked so it could clear up a little bit. Well, I'm doing a lot of talking. <laughs> so let's keep going. Here is the Essence False Lashes Mascara. It's the extra volume and curl. Throw this on. Tilt my mirror. I'm sure you guys know this, but there might be a few that don't. If you have longer lashes and you don't want to get the mascara on your lid, all you need to do is look down when you're doing your mascara and that will pull your lashes away from your lid 
and keep you from getting mascara on your lid. There we go. I like the better. Nice little coat and shade too. And then likewise, when you want to do the bottom, you just look down. So your eyes are looking up and your head is tilted down. And then you can see what you're doing when you put your mascara on. Makes it easier. There we go. A little bit more. And I don't know if you guys know this, but most of the time when I'm putting on mascara, I only pull it from the wand. I don't dip it in there two, three, four times. I just pull it and start using it. Because I feel like if I do that, I'm using, um, it's like too much product. You know what I'm saying? It's like it bunches up or collects underneath my eyes or something along those lines. So let's see. I think I'm going to put just a little bit of powder from that Ace Beauté palette underneath where I just put that mascara on. So I'm going to go back into that golden apple color with a flat brush. One of these boys. See that? Flat and just pull that underneath. Actually, yeah, why not? Let's try it. It's just so pigmented, I wanna really be careful here and not have this end up being like a whole situation. And then using the same brush, I'm going to go back into, whoa, it's big in the middle. I'm going to go back into Earth, this one right here, and just put that underneath as well. Pull this up a little bit. There we go. And like that. good. Do a little dab. This side doesn't need it. This side does. Just a little dab. It was like a blank spot. Gotta get the blank spot. The blank spot no one's gonna notice but I'm gonna notice and it's gonna annoy me if I don't do something about it. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay so for my lips Mm. Let's see, what do I have handy? I think I'll grab. Oh, how about this? What is this? Fen yeah, Fenty. This is the Fenty, one of their glosses. I think this one is called Fussy. And I don't always line my lips, but for the sake of this video, I think I will. So I'm going to use this brown liner. It's from MAC and it's called Quark. There we go. Yeah, I think that's good. I really didn't want anything like too dark or really dramatic because typically if I do like a really dramatic eye, I um I don't want my lip to clash with it. I would rather it just be neutral. So let's throw a little bit of fussy on there. All right, that's the look, you guys. What do you think? Do you like it? Did it turn out okay? Let me know in the comments. 
Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and I will talk to you soon. Take care.